There are a number of approaches to translating, localizing, and storing multilingual web content in a content management system, also known as a CMS. From translating directly on the CMS to loading and unloading the contents manually, most of these techniques have proven ineffective when requirements are urgent, complex, or recurring. The method that has proven to be the most efficient for the translation and localization of web content is the creation of an interoperable connection between specialized systems for both content creation and translation, that is, between the CMS and the Translation Management System, also known as a TMS. This demo shows how CMS-TMS interoperability provides more power and more control at a lower cost when using Internationalization Tag Set, or ITS, 2.0 metadata for multilingual web content. We have used the Drupal CMS run by Kokomore to provide interoperability with the translation server, the Global Business Connector server, or GBC server, and a TMS, the platform for the localization, interoperability, and normalization of translation, or PLINT, by LinguaServe. Here are the different phases that a file can go through. Drupal is a free and open source content management framework. Many of the top websites are built on Drupal and it supports large, fully multilingual site setups. Drupal is also well known for its extensibility through modules. At Kokomore, we made use of this possibility when we integrated an ITS 2.0 aware translation workflow in Drupal. A significant portion of the ITS 2.0 metadata can be derived immediately from information that is already available in the CMS. As an example, a central element in Drupal is the classification of content elements via user-defined taxonomies. This is an important feature for building websites and is often exactly the kind of information encoded in the ITS 2.0 data category domain. In this and similar cases, we provide the option to generate ITS 2.0 annotations automatically. In addition, we can interface with automatic linguistic annotation tools, such as those used for terminology recognition. Nevertheless, a number of data categories still have to be entered manually. For example, a decision to translate or not translate content or reliable disambiguation information will have to be provided by a human. We provide two manual annotation modes for this purpose. One uses annotation controls that are fully integrated into the Drupal WYSIWYG editor, including context menus and keyboard shortcuts. The other one uses a separate browser-based annotation tool that supports annotation only without allowing users to manipulate the page content itself. This can be used for doing annotation as a separate workflow step after content creation, without the risk of breaking the content. This second annotation tool can be downloaded separately for use outside of Drupal. An extension to TMGMT, Drupal's Translation Management Module, then allows you to assign translation tasks to ITS-enabled language service providers or even machine translation services and to keep an overview of the status of the translation tasks that you send off. Round-tripping of the annotated content between Drupal and the language service provider is completely transparent through ITS-enriched XHTML although the user will generally not see this XHTML directly. GBC Server receives the ITS2 XHTML content and performs integrity checks. LinguaServe's localization workflow is activated. In the pre-production phase, the file sent for translation from the client's CMS is processed in a common XML format for computer-assisted translation, or CAT tools. During the pre-processing, ITS 2.0 is also processed for the following phases of the workflow. ITS global rules like domain, localization note, and local rules like language information, allowed characters, storage size, and translate are extracted and converted from the Drupal XHTML file into a CAT tool-oriented XML file. Warnings to the project manager conveyed in ITS metadata are now available. This reduces management cost and time. Now the file is ready to be translated and the CAT tool project is created with the XML file where ITS 2.0 metadata can already be used in the project parameters. For example, specific dictionaries may be selected using domain metadata. In this example, domain is also visible to the translators and proofreaders but is locked by the CAT tool. 
The localization note information provides comments and instructions for the translators and proofreaders. It is visible to them, but again is locked by the cap tool. Storage size is used to specify the maximum storage size allowed for a given chunk of content. The translation should respect this maximum value. Language information is used to indicate the language of a given piece of content, since some parts may be in a different language than the one expected from the overall project. Translate gives information on whether the content of an element should be translated or not. The parts of a text marked as non-translatable will be locked by the cat tool. In general, all the text in black is editable and the text in blue is locked. Once the content has been translated and reviewed, Plint processes the XML cat-oriented files into the original format in XHTML by using ITS2 as activation or context rules. Plint also saves time and improves management, for example by automatically storing translation memories for future jobs in specific folders based on domain values. During the post-production phase, Plint inserts the translations and converts the CAT tool-oriented XML file into a Drupal XHTML file. Some ITS 2.0 metadata are updated, while others are removed, and additional data categories are added. For example, provenance information is added, language information is updated, and the translation is inserted in the corresponding nodes. Moving on to consider translated files that are ready for delivery, this is the translated XHTML file resulting from the post-processing phase. The file is ready to be downloaded by the client. Translated content is picked up automatically from within Drupal, again as enriched XHTML, although the user does not have to care about the format, and the translation is shown as ready in the translation management view. An optional quality check can be performed. This allows users to validate that all ITS markup has been ported to the translation correctly. And of course, it also lets them check whether the information in the markup has been taken into account by the translator or not. For example, it can verify that all no-translate content is still in the source language. Translated content can finally be published to the target language version of the website via Drupal standard publishing workflow. The whole process has been enabled by ITS 2.0, which has allowed direct and agile communication between the content creator and the localization team, automatic control and processes not just in a workflow, but in an expert system, saving time and money in both management and translation. For more information on ITS 2.0, please see the other videos at our YouTube channel. Thank you. Le long de long fils en attend. Je n'aime pas trop quand ça